plaintiff, Veronica Ruffins, was romantically involved with the defendant, but they weren't in a committed relationship until after they moved in together. Veronica claims while living together, she caught the defendant exchanging numbers with her 19-year-old niece, and they broke up after he moved out without warning. She's suing for the value of a truck. Defendant Philip Campbell admits that he moved out without giving Veronica notice, but says he did it because she frequently had outbursts and he couldn't take it anymore. Philip denies owing Veronica because he insists the truck belonged to him. And he's countersuing because Veronica vandalized his car. Start with you. Okay, Your Honor. I just want to state that Philip knew that he can get away with a lot of things, being that I was a nice person, I was in love with him. We but not worked... this time. <laughs> right. <laughs> We met actually at the same workplace, but we didn't start talking until October 2014. And come January of 2015, he moved into my place of residence with me and my two children. We was dating, we was doing a lot of things couples do, but he was still stating that we were just still friends. Come March of 2000... Before he moved in, was that your understanding? Be I believe that was more than just friends. Go ahead. In March of 2015, we were just sitting around drinking and out of nowhere, he just looked at me and said, well, we're together now. Are you happy? It wasn't sincere, but I took it because I, he finally realized and understand what I was trying to get from him. And um, later on in 2015, we was at a family gathering. It brought to my attention that he was exchanging numbers with my 19-year-old niece. When I brought it to his attention, he stated that he didn't know it was my niece. That's not the case. That's not the problem. If it was my niece or not, you still shouldn't have been doing something like that. I forgave him for it. Later on down the line, I did go through his phone and I seen another text message from, to another lady. Oh, you smell so good. Oh, when can I see you? Another lady. Oh, I didn't know that he had a girlfriend, so on and so forth. I brought it to his attention. He was just giving me weak excuses for everything that he said. I let it go. Come August of 2016, he just up and left. No notice, no nothing. He just left like a thief in the night. Didn't say anything, just took everything out the house. What I didn't do you even think know that was about? I have no idea. I still don't know to this day why he left. I, d I don't got no type of closure, no nothing on why he left. Do you still want to state why that you left? Would I do that bad that made you just want to up and leave after everything? Don't look at me. Oh, you can answer her question? Her. Yes. I left because your attitude. You had a bad attitude. And we talked about this. You have outbursts and just do stuff periodically. periodically. That last night I left at your brother's house, when you did the last outburst, just for me not riding with you to take your relatives home, and I asked you to just take me home so it'd be more room in the car, that was the last straw with you. That's when I put all my stuff, not the, everything in the house, I put my stuff in garbage bags, set it on the side of the house, and I waited till she got back, and I said, I'm about to go make a run. I put my stuff in there and left. Like and a then thief. text her. Just... <laughs> I'm about to go make a run. I, I... <laughs> I I'm going to the store, baby. Your Honor, I had to do it like that. No, I appreciate you doing it as you did, and I believe your story. Now, I know you might want to say you weren't having attitude and outbursts, and particularly that last incident. Do you want to address it or not? Because he's convinced me that he should have left if things were happening as he says, which means that you all perhaps had become violent with each other. You want to address that or not? We weren't becoming violent with each other. Were no. you having outbursts? No, I don't think that, that I was That particular incident, outbursts. did that happen? I don't believe that I had an outburst, Your Honor. All right. What are you suing him for today? Tell me about the car you're suing for. In June of 2015, I have evidence stating that the um, 2001 Grand Jeep Cherokee was in my name in short. Mm -hmm. I had this Jeep before I even met the defendant. Mm -hmm. He encouraged me to... Well, he convinced me, actually, to put the uh, car in his name to get cheaper insurance. Mm -hmm. I agreed with him. I went with him. But at the same time, he still knew that the vehicle was my vehicle that I had, that I purchased myself personally. I went with him. We did the insurance. He got the insurance cheaper. Okay, that was fine. Come September of 2015, he called me stating he fell asleep at the wheel. And I have a police report right here actually stating that he fell asleep at the wheel and he crashed the truck up. You drove the man drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I just, I drive school buses. We get up at five in the morning. I go to sleep late. That's every day I do that. Just that night, I stayed out a little bit longer with my friends. And uh, somebody took me back to the truck. On the way driving home, I turned the heat up on the expressway and I fell asleep on the expressway. When I got close to the, the edge of the expressway, when it make the brrrr noise, I woke up and I turned the wheel and I flipped the truck. I got mm. out the truck, sat on the rail. Like, how did I just do this? 
waited till the police got there. I said, I don't have to go to the hospital. I could just walk home or just take me home. He said, you got to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital. He ain't write it up. He would have gave me DWI or something if I was drunk or something like mm -hmm. that. I fell asleep. It was an honest mistake. Okay. So you're suing him about it. Why? Uh, it was yours. He agreed to repay you for it, obviously. Yes, he did. He right. agreed. Uh, he agreed to buy another vehicle, which he did mm -hmm. in November. He okay. bought a Buick, but it was my truck that I had that I always wanted. I always wanted this truck, and I finally was able to get it, and then you totaled it. You didn't... They really gave you a replacement vehicle. But he put it in his name. All right. In, in and insurance, and it? I use it. He has it. When he left like a thief in the night, he took he that took vehicle. It with and he, oh. I have nothing at all, completely. All right. Sir? Your Honor, that night, it was in my name, like I said. I still got the, the police report. Who owned it, sir? I did. You paid for it. No, she paid for it. It was hers at first. I had, how did, I had you, my, how did it go from hers at first to yours? Just then? like just like we said, to make the well, like she said, to make the bills cheaper in the house, we agreed to put the insurance under my name. Mm -hmm. She was paying one ninety eight just for liability so you on think the truck. Because the insurance was put in your name, you owned it. No. She That's gave she gave me the vehicle, you know. Why? She was supposed to buy another one at tax time. Because your good looks? No, sir. Why? We, she was supposed to buy another one at tax time. And did she? We went through some hardships. Did she buy her? No, she did not. Oh, so, I sold, and so I sold. she became carless. Right. So she's right. gone, you so fancy, <laughs> something so special about you, she gives you her only car. Your, right. Your Honor. And she goes carless. Your Honor, I had my own vehicle at the time. Yeah. I had a couple cars on That's that policy. That's my point. You had three, you just said. Okay, you had your own and you had a couple others. She just wanted to make sure it was an even number. So she gave you a four. For 2016, he just up and left. No notice, no nothing. He just left like a thief in the night. Didn't say anything, just took everything out the house. What I didn't do you even think know that was about? I have no idea. I still don't know to this day why he left. Plaintiff Veronica Ruffins is suing her ex-boyfriend, who claims after they broke up, Veronica vandalized his car. What's your counterclaim for, sir? After the breakup, uh, a, a couple days later, I say August 6th, uh, her friend pull up and block my car off while I'm at a stop sign. She get out the car, I back the car up a little bit, and I get out and talk to the friend. A couple minutes later, she pull up in her nephew car. She gets out and stabs the back passenger side of my tire. I just drove her. She got back in the car, pulled off. I drove the car around to my mother's house and put it in the garage. That next morning, I go to Fox Tire. I buy another tire. I didn't call her. I didn't say nothing about it. Didn't call the police. Uh, a couple hours later, my phone gets cut off. My service gets, like, deactivated. When I make a call, the, the phone was in my name. She knew the pen. She was the only one that knew the pen. We went to go get the phones together. Uh, okay. That's the same pens I use for like lottery and like a little couple of numbers. Uh, a couple days after that, I go to get my check from work. The dispatcher at my job that gives us checks say, your landlord been calling you. <laughs> said, that's her landlord. Uh, I wasn't on a lease agreement or nothing. Just kept calling, asking about where the money is at. She called <laughs> girls, asking why is his number in your phone? Now they having an argument. I had to change up some things just to try to stay away. It just been, she just been harassing me. After Relationship that. issues. Yes, sir. Doesn't sound like they're so outrageous as to grant you any significant money, but we'll see how much the uh, property was for the tire. You have that receipt? Yes, sir. And ma'am, tell me about this. I do admit to slashing his tire. I was upset. I was sad. I was hurt on how he did it and how he went about it. Knowing that I have two kids, knowing that he told on my vehicle, knowing that I couldn't get back and forth, you just left me with nothing at all. I bought that cell phone. He was there when I bought that cell phone. I got proof right here stating that I paid that bill. I bought that cell phone. Yes, I got it cut off because you just left me with nothing. Me and my two kids let's with just make sure nothing. It was yours. Let's make sure it was in your name. No, it wasn't. I just got two bank statements that it was about. paid in my um okay. with my bank card and that I made the payments okay. on it. Okay. Sorry. Right. This one, too, when I made the payment okay. for the phone and bill. sir, yeah, okay, you were getting away that night to avoid an outburst, and you were tired of the outbursts, but she was owed an explanation at some point. You could have, at some point later, tell her what you told her today, so sir. I texted her the same night, right after I left. And told her you all told that? Her, told her the relationship no. ain't going right. I'm tired of you stressing me out. You keep having outbursts. This has been a couple you incidents. You did tell her just yes. like you've told me today. Yes, sir. I did it through text. I couldn't talk to her on the phone. That's why I had to move the stuff out like I did. I couldn't do it. She would have been 
turned into physical. It did get physical. So I think you did right then. And I'm looking at the uh, phone bill. So why couldn't you get it turned back on? Because she had changed the pin. No, you go to the phone company and you say, hey, my phone that's in my name, it was cut off. I, I want to turn it back on. I called them. I called them and said I lost my pin. They said... No, no, no. Was it in your name? Yes, sir. Well, if it's in your name, I don't know my pen, but I promise you, I can go to that phone company, and if I say, I want to give you some more money <laughs> on this bill because it was cut off. No, not unless you got your pen number. <laughs> exactly. We don't take your money. That's exactly what they did. All right, I don't believe you. Now, see, I was believing everything you said up until then. Now you didn't messed up. All right, I'll grant you your judgment for $2,130. I do not believe that you gave him a car. And with regard to the tire, you've admitted to doing that. So I'll grant you, sir, the $88. I do not believe that the phone company told you that they won't even accept your money because you don't have the PIN number. I believe it was in her name, as she says. And when you have something in your name, you can cut it off when you want to. So the lesson there is, don't put it in the name of a woman who you're going to be fleeing from in the middle of the night. Judging for the plaintiff, an $88 for you. Have a good day. Thank you. I just want to say I'm glad that it's done. We can move on with our life. And yes. it's just lesson learned. We just moving on from here. Nothing to say. I'm glad it, 